Hi everybody, Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation. Many of you have heard me talk or, or read my post in the past, and you've heard me say that in our industry, there are lots of opinions, lots of assumptions, lots of speculations, and usually just a spoonful of science. And that, in my opinion, as a trainer, is what causes a lot of what I call urban legends. So today, I want to talk to you about an urban legend that has been created in our industry and about an illusion. And if you look up the definition of illusion, it means that sometimes we, what we're looking at or what we're seeing is not what's really happening. And so I want to share with you some things today that I think may give you some clarity on that subject. So here's the subject. The subject is hot water opens the cuticle layer, cold water closes the cuticle. And uh, that's why if you're using direct dyes, you should always rinse them in cold water. Now, you've heard me say for years that that's scientifically not true. The hair does not react to hot and cold. The hair reacts to pH. In other words, the only way to swell the cuticle is to expose it to a higher pH than its optimum environment. Of course, for hair, the optimum environment is 4.5 to 5.5 on the pH scale. But still yet, that urban legend, that illusion still keeps coming back and keeps coming back. As a matter of fact, a week or so ago, another video was posted, it went viral. I had tons of people who, who believe in what I teach contact me and go, well, why is this happening? Why is it happening? And I really struggled with that because I have the scientific microphotographs. You've seen them before. You can see them again. And it shows that there is virtually no difference. It's indistinguishable between hair put in hot water or hair put in cold water. So I've struggled with how to share that information with everyone and to get them to have clarity on it and to get them to, to become confident. And sincerely, I've never rinsed hair in cold water and all the direct dyes, all the fantasy shades I do. I've always shampooed my clients in the regular temperature water. Uh, I've never had an issue with longevity or anything like that. And so for me, you know, I just kind of go, why are you doing that? It just doesn't, absolutely doesn't make sense. So for those of you that have not seen those kind of videos, let us recreate that video for you right now. So step back, relax, and take a look at what happens when people post these videos and what they see, and then we'll talk about the illusion. Go ahead, enjoy.
So as you can see, that's a pretty visual video. When you watch that, one would assume that hot water is making the color bleed out of the hair more than cold water. And as you notice in the video, we didn't use just warm water like you would in a normal shampoo. We used virtually boiling water. And so even though I knew the science was correct, it was always an issue of how to break it down and explain it. I mean, what else could be happening? And see, sometimes when we see things occur, we just simply make an assumption and that's the only assumption we follow. And then we have a tendency to believe that. If I were to rinse the hair and the color ran out down the drain, I would go, oh my God, all the color washed out. I'm not gonna wash her hair with, I'm not gonna shampoo her hair with hot water. I'm gonna shampoo her hair with cold water. Cause I remember when I do my laundry, they always say, do your laundry and call the colored, your colored garments, do them in cold water. So we struggled with that for a while. But here is what I love about the people that I work with. Um, one of my teammates, Erica Blancet, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, give her credit for a lot of this. Erica says, well, what other kind of tests can we do to see where the fault lies? And so we decided to do a different test. We decided to test the color in the hot water and the cold water. And here's what we saw. Okay, what did you notice? Did you see that the hair was completely taken out of the picture and we just used the dye and you see the hot water, the, the dye put in the hot water, the direct dye put in the hot water seemed to release a ton more pigment than the dye put in cold water. So you say, what's happening? How's that possible? So here's where we're going to have to kind of go back to eighth grade science class, okay? <laughs> I want you guys to stick with me. I now want to show you a video of water. Everybody's familiar with water. And I want you to think about molecular activity because that's what's going on inside water molecules. There's movement going on. And so you're going to see in this video, where water begins as still water. And then when it gets to the boiling point, I want you to look at the difference in the activity. So here's your video on water, enjoy.
I'm sure you were quite impressed with how much quicker the water or the molecular activity was going on in the water as it became hotter and hotter and hotter. And I know you're saying, well, Dennis, what does that have to do with direct eyes bleeding out of the hair? Here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about oils versus water. Let's, let's do another video and let's talk about something like butter. Butter, as you know, is a solid when it's cold. But when you heat butter up, it becomes a liquid. So I want you to watch what happens as we put butter and we apply heat to it. I want you to see how much it expands. So enjoy. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, what's water and butter have to do with hair color? But here's what I want you to think about. Oils are more dense than water. What does that mean? That means there's molecular activity going on in oils, but it's slow molecular activity. Molecules are moving much slower. When I heat an oil... When I heat an oil, the molecular activity increases, the oil becomes thinner, and it begins to expand. So we could take an oil-based dye, which basically all hair color dyes are, they're oil-based. So when I expose them to heat, because those are direct dyes, they're already pre-developed. When I expose them to heat, what happens is the oil-based dye becomes thinner, more molecular activity, and therefore, when you look at it visually, it seems that you're getting extreme color loss because you're using hot water versus the color loss with cold water, again, where the molecular activity is not as visual. So what we're doing is looking at visual measurements here. Hot water, oil-based color, visually it looks like I'm losing a lot of color. Cold water, oil-based color, visually it looks like I'm losing less color. Here's the catch. The catch is that the color loss is no different between hot water or cold water. In fact, if you look at these pictures, you will see the swatch identified as hot water and the swatch identified as cold water are virtually both the same. So it is true that you are seeing color seem to bleed out of your hair, but your color loss is no more no more than you would have if you use cold water plus it's more convenient for the client and more comforting for the client anyway it's an illusion we're making an assumption because it's thinner and it looks like there's more color loss that we're losing color when in fact we're not 
the color loss is really pretty much the same whether you use warm water or cold water. Now, I wanted to show that to you today for a couple of reasons. I wanted to share that with you today because I want you to understand how in our industry, we see something occur, we make an assumption or a judgment about it without investigating it, and suddenly it becomes truth. And so people start teaching that. And as a trainer, for me, <clears throat> there is a requirement that I get to the bottom of why things work the way they do so that you as stylist and colorist can have more confidence in the colors that you're using and not go through these momentary situations where you go, oh my God, I have to change what I'm doing. So hopefully today you've learned a couple of things. Number one is that the hot water is not affecting the hair at all. <laughs> it's not affecting the hair at all. It is affecting the dyes, the direct dyes. Check your ingredient deck on your direct dyes. Many of your direct dyes have mineral oil in them. They have different types of oils in them. They're basically petroleum-based products, so they're going to have an oil base. Oil is denser. The molecules move at a slower rate. Water is not as dense. Those molecules much move much faster. If I heat water and I heat oil, both of them will have extreme molecular activity, but the oil will become thinner. It will be more water-like because of the increased molecular activity. That's why direct dyes seem to um, lose a lot of color when you rinse them at the shampoo bowl. The only thing is, is to remember that the color, really the virtual, the loss of color is minimal. It's negligible. Now, there's only one thing you have to remember. The shampoo you're going to use. If I am working with a cationic dye, which is a direct dye most often, it only makes sense that I would use a cationic shampoo. So you have to find out with your shampoos, which ones are cationic, which one are not. Cationic means that they do not pull anything away from the hair. Remember that direct dyes live on the hair and in and around the cuticle embrication. Anionic shampoos pull everything away. That's their, by, by their very virtual creation, that's what it's designed to do, to lift out things out of the hair. Whereas a cationic shampoo won't do that. That's up to you. You need to do your homework on that. Hopefully you found this video enlightening today. In any case, I appreciate you spending a few minutes with me and I wish you all the greatest success. And as always, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. I'll see you all soon. Take care. Have a great day.